Welcome to day 59 of my 1,000 mile solo run across Nepal. Um, I think I'm feeling a lot better today. I've noticed that the last couple of days I thought that I had a virus or something, like immune system fighting something. It's been pretty much like head down, not many photos, not many videos, um, just covering the distance that were, was part of my plan. Um, and today I noticed I got up, I'm happy again, I'm saying hello to lots of people, I'm taking lots of photos, lots of videos. So. Hopefully, whatever it was, it's leaving the system. Hope I'm not speaking too soon. I'll probably know at the end of today. Um, but it's still Tihan today, and today I've noticed that in lots and lots of doorways, there's a, kind of like a display on the ground, which I'll show you. It looks really nice, really kind of artistic. Uh, some people have made a real uh, effort, and it's really impressive. So this place is known by some locals as kind of like a historical center and it's really, really beautiful. Um, quaint little uh, houses. Uh, if this was anywhere near like Kathmandu or somewhere that's easily accessible, it would be really touristy. But uh, because it's, it's kind of remote, uh, it's, all, it's all for me. I'm the only tourist here it seems. So, mugging attempt number six. <laughs> this one's pretty low key, but it's only just happened and the guy might catch up with me still. Um, but going through that market, obviously loads and loads of people. Obviously I stick out like a sore thumb. Um, and one guy just came up to me, grabbed my arm and said, I like your watch, I like your watch, give me your watch. And I said, I kind of laughed it off, I said no. <laughs> um, kind of laughed at him because I mean, it's right in the middle of a market. Um, and uh, he said, yeah, yeah, I like your watch, give me your watch, give me your watch. And then he got, kind of got a little bit aggressive. And I said, okay, can you, where's the police, where's the police? And I kind of just switched modes. It's like, right, yeah, let's find the police, let's go. And I actually said to him, come on, you're coming with me to the police. Um, at which point he kind of just started walking off. Uh, but like I said, so the market is, is just there. You might still be able to see it. And, uh, you know, I've just left. And where I'm going is pretty quiet. So hopefully he's not going to follow me, but we'll see. Um, I mean, he could easily on a moped and just wait until I'm somewhere where there's no people. But I hope not. My issue with something like that, obviously I know I'm going into that market and I'm gonna get unwanted attention from some people that may be not so friendly. Um, but my attitude is, you know, it's a crowded place and, you know, hopefully if something happens, I can deal with it rather than, I don't wanna go into something like that. Uh, and either completely ignore it and just bypass it because it's a great opportunity to have a look around uh, or just kind of walk around trying to, try to be small and uh, undetected. There's no way I can be undetected. Not with like all my equipment and uh, obviously looking completely different to everyone else. Um, so my attitude is just out in the open really. You know, I still get my phone out, still take photos, videos um, and then deal with <laughs> whatever happens, if it happens. You know, there's one guy basically that attached to me himself to me um, you know next market I'll, there might be no one next market there might be two um, it's it's the morning it's kind of middle um, it's light lots of people around um, I think it's kind of worth it <laughs> if anything I kind of wish that I'd make a bit made a bit more of a scene back <laughs> back there because as soon as it was apparent that he just he wanted something on like my watch or something um, I kind of I kind of switched like I said I switched and I was like right where's the police let's go to the police and I kept men saying the word police and and he was kind of like health post oh yeah health post is that way I was like no police health post is that way so I think he kind of didn't want other people to see what was going on and this was right in the middle of the market surrounded by people um, so I kind of feel like I should have just said you know bad man bad man robber which the word robber uh, is what people use over here or understand here 
um, just to kind of make him really, really feel uncomfortable, perhaps, um, and that people, other people would kind of recognise what's going on, uh, that would have been better for the situation. So that's the only thing I would have done differently, I think. I've arrived in Duran and back there I've just had a haircut. <laughs> I just, it's really nice to get a haircut. It's kind of like having a shower after a really hard workout. Um, I, I went in, no one spoke English, and I just said, and, and a bit around my beard, and I got what I was given. And what an experience. I've never had a, like a Turkish cut, but I guess it's maybe something similar like that. It was the whole kind of like, I mean, he probably, out of all of that, uh, he probably spent the least time on my hair and on my beard. I'd say more than half of it was uh, joint cracking, massaging, pu almost pulling hair out. Uh, it was kind of like, like a sports massage for the scalp. Um, a lot of it was quite painful, but kind of nice at the same time. A uh, bit of an experience, it was good. Most of the households are doing uh, try the fabled uh, Nepali Braxi. <laughs> Braxi is like a homebrew. Forty uh, percent, I guess, like vodka. Maybe a little bit weaker. Maybe is it is it forty percent? Forty or yeah. I'm not sure whether it's forty or is it a bit more like sake, like closer to twenty thirty. I'll find out. Good for the, it's good for the muscles, yeah. Oh, good yeah. for the joints. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's uh, it works as painkiller for you. Yes. Mm. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, it's quite strong. It's served pretty warm. Um, it tastes about thirty percent. Yeah. Thirty percent. Yeah. I think L less than vodka, but more than wine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's quite nice. It's totally Fairly no. It can. And it's made of millet. Yeah, millet. This made of millet. millet. I thought it was made of rice. Of, uh, it's it's rice. Made of rice, potato. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe. <laughs> when you go um, nearly 200 kilometers upward than there, you can find animals, rocks. Ah, okay. Made, made up of flesh of animals. Okay, right. It's totally different and strange to listen here. Yeah? It's not my thing, but yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So we've had a little bit of a song, a little bit of a dance, a little bit of a drink, and now we're literally just going to the next house and doing it all over again. My friend here, Sontis, is that okay? Sontis uh, has just explained basically how all these little different parts of uh, Tikhar go together. So these circles that I've seen, uh, almost everywhere. Basically, that, that's like a symbol to say you can come here and you can celebrate the festival. And these lines as well. Uh, normally they're footprints, but here it's a line. And it's kind of like a line that you follow. So basically when I turned up here and we, we had a song and a dance at one house and then we went to the next house, this is kind of like the line that you follow. And the circle here, that's kind of like a sign to say you're welcome, you can come here. So. This is the next house with the circle and the lines and after we finished here we have a drink and then we go to the next house like that and that's the way that it celebrates it. Is that correct? Yeah. Do I understand that correctly? Okay, good, good. Yeah. I mean it's very different to anything we have in the UK but it's almost like a little bit of trick-or-treating. They go around different houses and then at the end of the singing and dancing uh, the owner of the house brings out a little plate and uh, it's always got rice on it, and they always take like a little bit of rice, and that's apparently uh, kind of like a memento. And there's a couple of apples there, a couple, some rupees, and it's kind of, I guess it's kind of like, thank you for coming. Apple. Apple, thank you very much. <laughs> So my planned route was basically about 20k today. I'm um, just looking at my watches. I'm actually at 28 at the moment, but it was at 20k that I will have started coming up my next hill, which is my last hill of the entire route. 
and it's uh, two kilometers vertically. So I thought, as today was meant to be a short day, I will climb a little bit of it, and uh, I think 400, 400 or 500 meters, and on all the maps that I had, there are lots of hotels all around this area. It seems to be quite a popular place, lots of restaurants, hotels, overlooking the city. Um, I've gone in every single hotel, and it's quite frustrating, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, they've all just basically said, it's not a hotel, it's a restaurant. And on Google, the name for each one is, you know, uh, Duran View Hotel and Lodge, uh, Tulip Hotel and Lodge. My battery ran out uh, when I was talking about hotel and lodge, I think. Um, yeah, my point was none of them were hotels. They were down as a hotel in the name, in the category. And I think, I think what it was was uh, because it was such a nice view over the city, they, all of these restaurants had like little rooms that you can book, kind of. Like it was just a table, uh, you can't, like a cubicle. You kind of had your own private little area. And they just called them hotels, I guess, because you could book a room. But none of them had anywhere to stay. So I just carried on up the hill, <laughs> hoping for the best. And initially I thought, well, you know what, maybe I can find a campsite. But it was like 10 minutes from darkness. And I knew there wasn't going to be any people. So I just thought, okay, I'm just going to carry on um, up that, you know, two, <laughs> two kilometers vertically. Um, and I did. Uh, it was another 20 kilometers horizontally. Uh, I think it was it was just over one kilometre uh, vertically because I already came up some uh, to when I did the last clip. Uh, it wasn't that great. You know, I, I felt very vulnerable just walking along the road, um, struggling up. Um, cars going past, total sitting duck if anyone wanted to <laughs> mug me along there. Um, but it was okay. And I got to the top and it seems to be like a tourist area, loads and loads of hotels. Um, supposed to be famous for its views, but I haven't seen the views yet. It was pitch black and really misty, actually. Uh, but anyway, I've made it up, so I'm going to have to kind of have a look at my route and maybe adjust a few little things because I wasn't supposed to be here until tomorrow. But that's no bad thing. <laughs>